Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about our, some MIDI controls and tool tips. So, uh, let's start with our MIDI controls. So there are several and they are all located right here or in the dreaded transport in here. So these are our MIDI controls. If you can't see them without the transport, remember you can use this drop down and then you'll want to click MIDI controls. So they're there, and there's actually some stuff I don't need really right now. So MIDI controls is an option if you use this drop down menu at the top right corner of the edit window. So uh, MIDI controls, there's a few buttons in here and a few different things we can affect, right? So the first one we're going to deal with is on the far left here, wait for note. So if I want to record some MIDI, so I've set I've record enabled my, my MIDI track right now, and I can hear some. And I'll just get that slightly louder so I can hear it a little better. All right. Okay, so we've got our MIDI ready to record, right? Now, most of the time, what you have to do in Pro Tools is start record enable your track record enable your session then hit the play button to get things going right uh, that is a lot of work to then hit record yourself and then jump over to the piano and try and start at the right time if we set a very specific time to start our recording uh, you might miss it if you hit record so I'm gonna record enable and instead of that what I can do is use this first option here which is called wait for note so if I have wait for note selected here, I have it on, uh, I can arm my track, start by hitting the record button, and then notice it's blinking at me. Well, it's actually waiting for me to play the first note, and when I do play that note, it's going to be lined up perfectly to this beat. So the instant I start playing, it will start recording and it will be lined up just right. All right, so I got a really accurate start to my MIDI recording. So that's wait for note. So it's gonna wait until you're ready and then it'll play, right? Or then it will record. So I'll do it here one more time. I'm gonna set up recording. Notice they blink instead of start. And then as soon as I play a note, I will get some audio happening, uh, some recording happening. Right, didn't really fit with the music, but uh, I think you get the idea. So, wait for note. It's really useful when you're doing MIDI recording, right? So, uh, again, turn it on, record enable, you can start the recording, and they will blink until you play a note on your MIDI controller, whatever that might be. Next thing, metronome icon here, on and off. So, this guy doesn't work unless you actually have a click already in your track. So remember to create a click track, you need to go to track and then create click track. And once you have a click, you will be able to hear it. I'm going to solo it real quick. All right. The best way to actually deal with a click is not by soloing and muting it. It's turning on and off with the MIDI controls. So quickest, easiest way, especially because the click track can get lost in, you know, 100 tracks. You spend five minutes looking for your click track uh, when it's really easy to just turn on and off right here. You never miss that button, it never moves on you. So this is the best way to turn on and off your click track. And again, it won't work if you don't have a click in your session. You have to add the click as a track by going track, create click track. So let's talk about count off. So count off will give us a couple of bars of our click before the recording actually starts. So pre-roll will give us actual audio playing back before, but we might just want clicks right we might just want two measures of our our metronome playing in order to get our start cool so I'm gonna start a recording on this piano track it's gonna click for two bars and then it will start the recording so I can line up so I'm starting to feel my beat one two three four and then I play and then I get that right I get whatever I played which was amazing right so count off gives us however much click we want before we actually start I can adjust settings on count off by double clicking it so maybe I only want one bar well I can do count off and set it to one bar 
Uh, I can also set it to only during record if I want, uh, so that when I, when I play back, it doesn't do a count off every time I hit play, which is probably a good thing if I've got count off on. I don't always want it to count us off every time I listen to a piece of music, right? So if, it's, if that's on, I got my dialog back. Here we go. If I hit it and I go right here and count off is on, it's going to give me four clicks before it starts playing. And then it's going to start playing, right? Right? So I, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't really want it every time I play back. So I can use this setting to go, oh, no, just do it when I record, do the count off. Okay. And now I'm going to hit play back. It plays just normally. But then if I hit record, I'll get four clicks before I start. Two, three, four, and then I should go. And there it is. All right, so count off is kind of useful when we have some settings that we can do on our, in a dialog box, if we double click that one bar. You can also get there by going set up and then click count off. Click count off right there. And again, I, it keeps opening on my other screen, but there it is, right? So next one, let's go with MIDI merge. MIDI merge is super useful. So MIDI merge lets you record a little bit of audio. So say, So say that I have, uh, first of all, let's say the truth and say I'm not a very good piano player. So if I'm going to do a piano part, I'm going to have to probably break up the different things that I have to do on the piano in order to record it. But I can probably build up an okay part with a couple of takes and layering the audio. You can also do this, this is great for like creating a drum, uh, a drum loop or something. So like say you want to build up a drum track, well you might just start by just hitting the kick. And then you do another a MIDI merge setting and you record again and it won't get rid of what you started with. So here, let me demo that. So it's going to be one bar of click and then I'm going to get to play some MIDI uh, in a first pass. And it doesn't actually matter if the MIDI merge is on right now uh, because it's my first take, right? So here I go. I'm going to play a little bit of piano. And that's my amazing piano part right there so far. And then what I can do is if MIDI merge is on and I record over this, I won't lose the original audio. It will just add it on top. I'll do. Yeah, I'll do something like that. So ready, here I go. I'm gonna record this and then I'll get them on top of each other. Right? So now I have those two layers and I got to hear the original layer. So as you, if you're doing drums, you want to hear that kick and then maybe you add in the snare and then maybe you add in that hi-hat. So you can just layer one instrument at a time using MIDI merge. Now you can undo this and you'll go back one take. Right? So you can undo the last one, whatever the last one you did. So maybe I wasn't happy with uh, what I came up with that for that one. So then I can undo and do it one more time and I didn't lose the stuff that was in it in the first place, right? That I had already put in. And I'm gonna go, I'll do that instead, let's try it. So MIDI merge on, three, four. And now I'm starting to get what sounds almost like someone who can play piano. Right? Still not great, but it works, right? So that's MIDI merge. If I don't have MIDI merge on, it overwrites. So if I do it now, so it's now overwritten all the MIDI that I had written before, and now I'm, I have a new fresh MIDI track, right, or clip. Cool, so that's that MIDI merge. MIDI merge is super, super useful. It's great. Okay. Uh, a couple other little things in here. So one is, let's go over to the tempo field. So tempo, I'm going to open up in the rulers. I'm going to open up my tempo ruler here. So there's my tempo ruler. I'm going to put it right at the bottom. So that's our tempo ruler, right? So if I have a tempo in my session and I add a new tempo here, 
and I'm gonna make it, it's gonna open up, I just clicked the plus here, and now I'm gonna make the, the beats per minute change. I'm gonna go to like 200 right here at that spot. So notice I get a little spot wherever my selection was that goes, okay, now you want your tempo to be 200, and it actually will automatically have put the original setting of 96 for this that was there already here at the beginning. So we now have two bits of information in our tempo ruler, an original tempo of 96 and then a new tempo of 200. So this icon right here, the conductor track, or Harry Potter, because it kind of looks like, doesn't really look like a conductor, it kind of looks like a guy holding a wand. So our conductor track, or our, what's the other word they use for it sometimes? It is the, ah, the tempo ruler enable. So enable the tempo ruler. So that's exactly what happens with the conductor track. If it's on, the tempo ruler is gonna get red. So it's on right now. I'm at 96 here, and when I hit there, I should hear my click go to, I don't need my count off or anything. I should hear my click change speed when it hits that. Two, three, four, and then all of a sudden, much faster, right? So that's reading back what's in the tempo ruler when this is on. And you can have tempo changes and all kinds of things can end up being put in the tempo ruler. And in order for them to get read, you need Harry Potter on. If you turn Harry Potter off, you will need to set your tempo overall here and anything in this tempo meter then disappears and is hidden and will not get read. So then you just have to set a tempo here up in the top of this ruler here and you can type in a number if you want to, 200 and then hit enter and so suddenly everything's going very fast. It was at 96. You can also click and drag this to change it and my MIDI is adjusting in relation, of course. So I can click and drag up and down. I'm clicking and so I clicked here and then I just, I'm holding down the button and pressing vertically up and down, right? So uh, I can adjust my tempo that way. But the, my favorite way to do it is, is you pick the tempo that you want. You click this so that it's highlighted. And then you just tap the T key at the speed that you want it to go. So maybe I want like this speed. Well, I just tap that on my keys. Oh, and then it tells me what tempo that is and sets it. 148. Nice. So now my tempo's right, and then I can hit my enter or return key. And there's my new tempo that I was able to tap in, you know, because often you don't know exactly what tempo you want, and you don't want to have to mess around with this for too long, so it's so much nicer if you're like, oh, I know what I want it to feel like. You just T key, tap it in, and you're good. Uh, and I think we're just down to our very last thing, which is meter. Harry Potter's back on. I'm back at 96, right? What if at my 200 right here, I want to change the meter as well and go from four to three? So if I double click that meter button, I can then switch this, I'll get a dialogue, and I can switch to three, four if I want to. And you'll notice the grid changes, right? Now it's, you can see that there's a, a bar every three of these rectangular boxes, right? Three beats per measure now and the click will change because it will emphasize the first beat of every measure, the downbeat. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, okay, so last thing is uh, tool tips and maybe a little shortcut key recap. So first thing, tool tips. There's a lot of stuff in all this edit window uh, toolbar, right? There's a whole lot of things. If you can't remember what something's called, you can just hover over that and it will tell you its name, right? So you just hover and you will get a sense of all these different things. Does it work in the edit modes? No, maybe because that's a word, but any of these icons are gonna show up. Maybe over here, maybe play and stop and record. And these MIDI keys that we just learned, wait for note, metronome, MIDI merge, Harry Potter. And if you want to turn them off, you can go to preferences and you'll see in basic. So that was setup preferences and then you can turn off the function or the details. And right now for me, that's not really working. Uh, if I turn off function, I see nothing. And if I turn on and off details, I see no difference, but uh, somewhere that must be making a change. Uh, but if you uncheck these, you're guaranteed not to have your tooltips anymore. So I'm going to uncheck. Okay. I'm going to hover. Nothing.
but I like them here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them back on. How do I do that? Setup, preferences, the dialog opens up, display and basics, and then I'm going to just put function and details back on. And then I'm going to get this. Scrubber tool, play, record enable, stop, all that good stuff. Okay, uh, finally, shortcuts, real quick. How do we reverse things most often? If I have the zoom tool, for instance, if I zoom in this way, it's alt or option, depending on your system, uh, to flip it the other direction. If I want to flip my trimmer, so just a couple shortcut review, right? If I want to flip my trimmer, same deal. Option or Alt will flip the direction of my trimmer. So I can hold down up and then I get that. Option or Alt. Cool. Uh, another one is same key. I can all I can option or alt click any of my rulers and see things disappear and show back up. So that same key does uh, a turns off things typically or reverses them, right? So I can click any of these rulers with option or alt held down and they will disappear. It will flip my trimmer. It will reverse my uh, zoom tool. And then I can double click the zoom tool for a special feature, right? That goes to the exact length of my session, right? It zooms so that I can see everything in my session. And really what it's zooming to is the longest track in the session. Then selections. So the shift key does things with selections. So if I want to make a selection from here over to here, I can click my start point, hold down shift, and then click my end point and I get a selection. Right? And if I hold down shift still, it will actually shrink it. If I click again while I'm holding shift, it will also make it smaller. Right? It can also create, shift can also create selections once we learn how to do it. Right, so I can make a selection with just keys using shift as well. We'll learn how to do that later. And then, how do we switch edit modes? We have two shortcut keys for that. So we can either do function and then F1, 2, 3, 4 to go through my edit modes, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. Or I can do option and then the regular 1, 2, 3, 4 keys. And that's it for that stuff. Uh, I hope all that is really clear and really makes recording music easier and more fun, or doing your podcast or whatever it might be. Uh, until the next time, see you later.